The land of thousand hills, a country which was once known for its horrifying genocide, but today is famous for being one of the cleanest and safest countries of Africa. Welcome to Rwanda. While there's a lot of things to do in Rwanda, today's video will exclusively focus on gorilla trekking, which is by far the most popular thing to do in Rwanda. Let's have a look. Our journey starts from the capital of Rwanda, Kigali. After landing at Kigali, we take a two and a half hour drive to the small village of Kinigi, which lies right next to the popular Volcanoes National Park. The tropical rainforests of Central Africa are pretty much the only place in the whole world where you can find wild gorillas in abundance. This specific region of rainforest is located right on the border between the countries Rwanda, Uganda and Congo. While it's possible to see gorillas also from Uganda and Congo, Rwanda remains by far the most convenient and the safest option. Before the trek starts, ensure that you have enough water packed for 6 to 7 hours and have some small snacks. Also ensure that you are wearing the right clothing, long sleeves, light clothing and thick boots. A raincoat is also essential because it may rain any time in a rainforest, even in the dry season of August-September. We also wore gaiters, these thick padded guardings for our ankles, which go over our shoes all the way up to our knees. You'll see why it's important later. Mosquito and insect repellent. <laughs> A further one hour drive from Kinigi leads you to the starting point of the national park. It passes through a very rural area with friendly people. Children in this village love saying hello to tourists. Hello. Keep in mind that you need to purchase gorilla permits from the government website of Rwanda well before in advance. A couple of weeks before you start the trek would be ideal. Every day there are only 96 permits issued by the government. That means only 96 people can do gorilla trekking every day. This is a great way to keep over tourism in check and avoid being overbearing on the gorillas. The permit costs $1,500 per person. It's pretty expensive, but the good news for you is that these groups are small. Our trekking group was just three other people apart from the two of us. Rest all you see were forest rangers and guides. Additionally, you get to spend a lot of time with gorillas personally, up to one hour. And the whole process is very smooth reliable and the surroundings of the office and park are extremely well maintained by the government. So this is the place where we start our trekking from. There's a lot of uh, stony road here <laughs> which means that the car gives you a very shaky ride. But from here you go up to the mountain that's the Volcanoes National Park. We can pay some porters here. It's advised to do that so you support the local community and they help you carry your bags up. I believe it's going to be a one to two hour trek. Let's go. It is gigantic. It is gigantic. It's thicker than my finger. You can see that our trek went through some really deep rainforests. A lot of mud, sludge, water and stinging nettles. Have you ever been in a jungle this dense? No? Not sure. <laughs> Ouch. These plants actually sting you like a needle. Except the pain lasts for many minutes up to one hour even. They were everywhere and no matter how careful we were, we got stung multiple times on our arms and legs despite wearing clothing and gaiters. The jungle is eating you. I hear them. You also? After two hours of trekking through the rainforest, we finally got the first sight of gorillas. A mother and her baby gorilla. Yeah, you see the baby's coming. Oh, you the baby's side. coming, true. You get, please, get to that side. No pictures. Okay, okay. no pictures. Get the baby first. Come, yeah. come, Vanessa. 
No pictures. Yeah. You read the baby first before mama. Gorillas are extremely shy creatures. They are known to be neophobic and fear new things. However, constant habituation has ensured that many wild gorillas in the Volcanoes National Park have become accustomed to humans. In fact, they didn't seem to mind our presence at all. They continued doing about their daily job. <laughs> Our guides told us that there are about 20 families of gorillas living in this national park. But only 12 of them are actually friendly and used to humans. We met one such gorilla family on our track. Each family consists of 10 to 15 members with one or two alpha males leading the pack. They are known as silverbacks. These males have multiple females in the group, but they are gorillas of all ages. Babies, teenagers and young adults. The young adults are known to be the most naughty ones, often called the troublemakers. If you are near them, they may start playing or pushing you. Come, come, come here. Oh. girl. Uh -huh. <coughs> On the other hand, silverbacks must be shown respect. If they challenge you, you must bow down and break eye contact. Silverback. Making this certain grunting sound also lets the gorilla know that humans are around. It's really great to know that our guides were very well accustomed to these sounds and gestures. If you follow these basic set of rules, gorillas pose almost no threat to humans. There's nothing to be scared. And you can go pretty close to them to take the pictures and watch them eating and enjoying. We had to wear masks while being near the gorillas because it's very important to ensure their safety. Being so closely related to us, gorillas can actually catch COVID or other respiratory infections. Coming close to them or touching them would expose them to human pathogens and diseases and vice versa. The last thing we want is making the gorilla sick. Wild gorillas are an endangered species. Today, there are only about a thousand individuals left in the wild. This is actually quite an improvement from 1970s when their population had dwindled down to around 400 individuals only. That was mainly due to poaching and habitat destruction. But the Rwandan government has done some exceptional work in trying to revive their population through sustainable ecotourism. Many poachers of yesterday have been educated and taught lessons in conservation. Today, you will find ex-poachers working as forest rangers, tourist guides and even potters. It is highly recommended to get a potter to carry your bags while you trek, not because the trek is hard, but because it provides employment to the villagers nearby. It ensures that no individual would have to fall to poaching again to sustain a livelihood for himself. The average payment is around $10 per potter. The bumpy road can really make you feel quite nauseous. So um, we're walking and the car is coming behind us. Yeah, unlike the first time. <laughs> which was a very shaky house and, and it was almost the same speed. So we thought it's better to walk this and the car comes behind us. <laughs> you get to spend a whole hour with the gorillas in this adventure, regardless of how long the trekking took. That's more than enough time to take photos, videos and observe their behaviors and surroundings. You can be happy knowing that your presence is actually helping support the gorillas and increase their population. Overall, it's a very fulfilling and extraordinary adventure, a once-in-a-lifetime thing. If you like this video, do subscribe to the DW Travel Channel for more such videos. See you next time.